All right, ready? You're good. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dead Box Podcast. I forgot the name of the podcast. Wow, it's really bit. been that long, huh? It has been that long. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Cisco. You guys, want to introduce yourself? No. Okay. I'm Boaz. <laughs> and I'm Kevin. And today we are going to be talking about what is, what are the perfect accessories for your airsoft gun. Now, the three of us have different play styles and accessorize our airsoft guns to our specific needs. So we're going to dive in a little deeper into each subcategory and talk about uh, our um, reasoning, our um our philosophy. Our philosophy, that's a good word, uh, on why we choose to use these accessories. Um, so in accessories, you know, we have optics, stocks, pistol grips. We also have vertical grips or hand stops, flashlights, suppressors, or, or uh, flash hiders, tracer units, uh, the whole shebang, even the rail system itself. But um, yeah, I think maybe we should talk about uh, optics first because I think that's probably the biggest one people have questions about. So me personally I typically will run a short dot optic or LPVO standing for low power variable optic. Reason being is because I can turn it all the way down to one times magnification and use it like a red dot excuse me uh, but I can also crank up the magnification uh, to have uh, you know something that I can use at longer range targets. Um, for me, I think it's a good balance because I have used just plain iron sights before, um, different types of red dots, and uh, I think it does give me more usability uh, on the field when playing. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts because I think they're going to be quite similar, honestly, between you two. Uh, maybe. Boys, you can go first. Okay, so for me, I actually, a while ago, uh, maybe back when I was starting off maybe back in college, late high school, I actually did like magnified optics. In fact, one of my first red dots that I've used was an Airsoft holographic 5.5.3. Oh, Airsoft. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Airsoft. yeah, yeah. Yeah, 5.5.3 holographic. Can't say the name. If you know, you know. And with a flip to side three times magnifier wow. right so old school yeah, yeah yeah yeah. so i i used to run that and let me tell you it was pretty heavy mm -hmm. it was still on my polymer body uh gng combat machine eventually got r hopped and that's sort of what i use now i think now i've kind of shifted away from that and like even with my uh the short dot scope or whatnot i only have that really on my dmr because it needs it but Generally, for me, I don't like using magnified optics that much anymore for airsoft just because I realize that if I can't see them with a red dot, I'm probably not going to be able to hit them. You sure. know, yeah. Fair. If, fair. if they're too small, too far away, right? And you use a magnet. Like, I usually end up with the unfortunate reality of watching my BBs drop. I actually used to have uh, an Elcan replica. Oh, on nice. My, yeah, on one of my Mark 18s. And I, I stopped using it because I just I was just <laughs> watching the BB just fall short, you know, like it just it wasn't worth it for me. So for me personally, with the red dot, I don't like just using any old red dot. I actually like having a circle reticle, not a dot, right? Like the what you call it, the donut of death or whatever. I like. It, <laughs> I've never yeah, heard that. It's ever. a it's it's like a sloppy. I'll call it like more like a sloppy reticle, just because I think airsoft in general is not super accurate. And I don't really build my guns out super crazy to be super accurate. So like anything within that radius, right? Like there's a general probability that I'm going to hit something. So Understandable. That, yeah, so that's one thing I like. And then one thing fancier on some of my uh, guns I take out to like Milsom games and stuff. I would generally like to have it uh, night vision compatible so I could, mm. I could aim yeah, while I'm renting, you know, using rental night vision. This boy has money. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no money. No, no money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I bought a couple of those high-end airsoft holographic sites, <laughs> and let me tell you, it does break the piggy bank. Well, what about now? What do you have on here? So this is also another airsoft, airsoft? holographic site. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't find a model that that has a night vision compatible mode with this. This one is my Tokyo Murray MWS gas pullback rifle. I, I, I put this as a centerpiece just because not, not only for the sake of my own vanity, but uh, because it has, <laughs> it has, it has, it has all the accessories you can speak of. So for this one, oh, I also did include a riser 
on this because mm, yes. um, yeah, when the Unity PTS Unity risers came out, and I started using them, playing around with them with the video that we made together, uh, it changed my life. Mm. Like, <laughs> let me tell you, like I I don't like having that neck fatigue where you have to like extend your neck out or like kind of like dip down, dip down, right, to look through the optic. Yeah, I just I just think it's so much more natural just to bring the gun right up to your eye, and then the Unity riser just helps that much more. So, and then also it clears, right? Like any peck box, any flashlight that they're using. Uh, the only downside I think to that is uh, once you have this riser on, you can't really use traditional iron sights anymore, mm. which is why you don't see any rear sight here on the back is because uh, I, I can't use it anymore. True. Nice. See, here's the thing though, with, with the riser, that's like the traditional way of doing it to get a better sight picture on on your gun however this is basically the reverse uno card of a drop stock uh debatable no <laughs> no. no 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 it's debatable it's, it's very very debatable see here's the thing though with your riser your optic has uh, a quick release and you have the the front the leaf sight on your on your uh d-ball here so you could have a rear sight just to have i mean up. if this was like a real gun then yeah, I would go through the trouble. Dude, but it's freaking airsoft, man. Like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, Kevin, what are your opinions about optics? Um, well, actually, I love using a red dot. Mm -hmm. Um, contrary to other speed softers out there that don't use red dots, and I see that a lot actually in the speed soft community. A lot of um people that play BQB, they don't use an optic. They just the look, tracer. Yeah. They just look down the rail and they track their BBs using the tracer. Yep. Or flashlight. Or flashlight or things like that. Um, but I actually found using an optic was really advantageous for me because yes, you can track your BBs when you're using a tracer, but you have to shoot one to see where your BB's gonna go first and then readjust. Yep. And then, you know, you're like, oh yeah, now I know where my BBs are. Yeah. But I'd rather have my first shot on point on point and i yep. know exactly where it's gonna be right. so so my favorite optic to use and i've been using this optic for quite a while now um is the seymour sight mm, yep and i love the seymour very sight because yeah it's it's very like low drag very low profile and i just love the circular window for it it's how open it is how open it is yep. and and even the the molding that holds the glass is very thin too so i don't have a lot of like distractions you know like yeah um i used to use a, a t t1 or a t2 and th that's also another popular optic in the cqb environment or a lot of speed softers use the t1 yep. but for some reason i think the t1 has a bigger profile and mm. the the what is it the thing that holds the glass the, the overall optic yeah right? it's just it's just bulkier yeah so it makes the sight picture a little bit more distracting um, so I kind of strayed away from that. So for my indoor CQB build, I'll use the Seymour sight. Love it a lot. And then for my outdoor build, I actually kind of have that same mentality where I love an open window. So I went with the Airsoft <laughs> SRO style. MRO. MRO. MRO style <laughs> optic. And that one is like a T1, but like like wider, you know? Yes. You know no. which one I'm talking about? I definitely know. It's like I picked a bigger one circle. So... I don't know. I, I love the ability to use a red dot um, and the lower profile, the less distracting, the better. Yeah. I do understand what you're saying because the Seymour is more of a reflex sight. Right. So it's one pane of glass and the the dot is projected onto it yep. versus like the holographic style. Right. Um, you know, it's bouncing off of like a few different things. Yeah. Um, but like this style is, is definitely different from like a traditional red dot tube, like the T1, yeah. where it's completely encased, but um, you have literally just like, like my hand here, you have your window and it is like, this is, you know, tunnel vision, you know, you hyper-focus right. uh, to a specific thing. Right. Having a larger um, a casing, excuse me, a casing for your optic can cause you to uh, you know, have tunnel vision to focus into the glass instead right. of, you know, having it open and view your surroundings as well, which um, is something that that I do agree with. Um, and I know Boaz, he likes uh, the holographic style because the window is much larger and the circle. So you're able to see more inside. See more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're able to see more through the window. Um, and I mean, 
for some people it's not as um intrusive mm. I- I- invasive on their vision mm. so they're able to still keep situational awareness around them mm. um while still being able, being able to use a, a bulkier dot um, and i do get what you're saying about how the the side walls itself yeah can block that out which is very interesting because i don't think a lot of people think about that yeah yeah and i i think people don't know it's a distraction until they take a look through like a low profile yeah. set, like a seymour yeah like i've shown my seymour to a lot of people on the field they just want to check it out right yep and instantly once they look through it they're like whoa like it's like it's like not even there yeah you know like all you see is the dot like that, yep. that's all you really need to see and, and kind of like touching on what boaz said about his reticle being the the donut right i actually prefer the dot the dot oh, again is i'm trying to go for a, a less distracting site I think with the dot, it's it's just too much going on, mm. you know. So you're kind of trying to figure out what's going on here, where. Right, right, right. And at least in CQB, my gun can actually be quite accurate. Yep. So the dot, I'll you know um, zero it so that it's accurate to a certain distance. Yep. Um, so I actually want that accuracy, whereas the dot, or uh, with with the circle, the donut. Um, you know, it's it's again a little distracting for me. I, I just treat the whole donut as the dot. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. you, I, I understand because I used to do that with my airsoft holographic sight, <laughs> um, where um, I wasn't building my airsoft guns like too crazy. Like I throw like a upgraded inner barrel and bucking and stuff. But even at distance, especially outdoors, you know, windage plays a really big factor, and just having just having the circle just put the the person in the circle and just shoot and then nice. m- more than likely you're gonna hit them yeah, yeah and then um, at distance right you have that little tiny dot in the middle yep for which, a little bit more precision yeah so so for me when i aim at someone even out to distance first get that big old donut on the dude right and then shoot a couple shots and then i'll, I'll, I'll use that mini dot mm. to help find but actually going off what you said about field of view in my experience personally if you guys are looking for recommendations, especially for budget optics, the best experience I had, especially with field of view and maintaining situational awareness, is those panoramic red dots. Oh, the NC Star. The NC Star. Yeah. The, the Vism. Or the, 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 the one that you see like in those older Call of Duty games where like, yeah. it's like that like rectangle like oh, window. Oh, with the, oh, yeah. oh. Yep. That, we that, have the flip up <clears throat> one, right? The, well, we have well, that that's one. That's fancier one, yeah. But, but uh, we have, we the, have the standard ones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yes. tons of companies make them. NC Star Aim, yep. uh, Baby oh. Vism, Lancer Tactical for sure yep. makes them. Tons of companies make those. Yeah, and they have those multi reticles. So yep. like. Oh, yeah. Those yeah, are I, so nice. I had one. Yeah, I had one long time ago on my KDB Way SR7 when I first got it. And, and then I, I switched the reticle to like the, the donut, right? I honestly, it was probably the best optic that I've used, uh, you know, up to that point. And honestly, like if I wasn't such a sucker for like looks, I guess. Like, yeah. The only reason why I tra- <laughs> traded out, yeah, yeah. The only reason why I traded out is because it just, in my opinion, Doesn't in my taste, good. it didn't look good. Yeah. It didn't look cool. Yeah. But not anymore. Yeah, I, at yeah least. but I've yeah, but I've, I've racked up plenty of kills, you know, on oh, the field. Yeah. yeah. With that red dot. And let me tell you, like it, it, like you said, like it's almost like it's not even there because like the field of view is so wide. Yeah, yeah I agree now, with that. Now, quick question, really quick question: Do you care what color your reticle is, or do you have a preference? I, Personally, I just keep it red. Yeah, that's the only option I have. But, the, yeah. <laughs> but if you have the option to, because I know some optics they're like you know you can red, change green, to blue, blue, green, yeah. red. I think for me, it's more about how bright it is. Yeah, so, that's true. Um, when I first started looking into optics and what I should get, um, I was told or I was informed that green was for outdoors, red is for indoors. Really? Yeah, because red outside, especially if it doesn't have that um, that high of a brightness, it can, can get lost. Yeah, you can get lost in the sauce. I do. <laughs> I do notice that with my my airsoft yeah uh srl yeah it does get a little, little lost when it's MRO. really bright MRO, sorry <laughs> no yeah so um having green uh for outdoors even at a lower brightness it just it's more pronounced mm-hmm. outdoors but um it's funny because you know i said earlier that i usually like uh, uh short dots but for it depends on the gun that i'm building too because a lot of the guns i'll build carbine length to rifle length for uh, a recce style like spr build 
but I do have plenty of uh, short barrel rifles that I do use red dots and um, I think it depends on the play style like you like red dots for precision especially um, your specific red dot you're able to acquire it really quick mm -hmm. get it on target boy as he likes to have the circle of death to uh, not Xbox <laughs> to um, you know uh, just to generalize his optic or his his target um, site yeah, yeah. Yep. but um, uh, for me like there was a period of time where I was just running red dots on everything even my long distance guns because it was it was good enough like I do agree that red dots are probably like the well rounder and maybe because I'm a little bit bougie I like the short dots but um I mean there was a period of time where I was just running iron sights as well mm -hmm. and I think everyone should get proficient in running iron sights because when you do that you're able to uh draw your your gun and line it up you know more muscle reflex you know mm -hmm. more instinctively and then when you once you have that down then you throw the red dot on there then it's just like oh there's the dot you know yeah really quick so here's a controversial opinion though especially when you guys are talking about colors and brightness actually for me i prefer having my red dot fairly dim really so no, i agree yeah i agree so even even like especially i think it's more pronounced indoors but like if the op if the optic dot is too bright it like just the way your eyes work right it'll expose for the brightest thing in the room oh yes yep yeah so if your eyes adjust to the super bright red dot then everything else becomes super dark and I can't see it. And then I have to use my flashlight. Then I'm giving myself oh, yes. away, yep. right? So even, especially if it comes to outdoors, running it dim actually to me serves me an advantage because it's not going to block. So, so remember how I said like, I, I use that donut to like, even in long distance to put it on the target, right? Yep. And then use a the little micro dot. If it was too bright, it would honestly, it would it's block. Yeah, right? it'll distract and block the figure of the guy far away. Yep. Right. Whereas if it's dimmer, it's more transparent. Yes. And I can kind of overlay that on the target. And then also, because it's not, like you said, distracting, I can still see the BB travel and mm, gauge, right. like, hey, like, am I, is my gun shooting far enough to even hit this guy? Right. Or like, am I a little off? Because sometimes, uh, one thing that kind of bugs me, especially when I'm running gas balloon rifles and I'm using lower quality replica optics, is that uh, they don't really retain zero 100% especially after recoil. So, you know, like sometimes I might have to use even that little dot as like a sort of almost like a little reference. Yep. Because sometimes it's just not. That perfect. is his yeah. first BB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I get that because like I said, with brightness, um, I have astigmatism. So if I have it too bright, it, the, it starts to flare out and um, it does become very distracting. But I have noticed when outdoors if i can just tune it to the perfect setting it's a nice clear dot that i can see uh, that isn't overbearing and distracting um but um like i again just having the adjustability is it's better to have it than have it and not need it than to need it and not and have, not have it, it. Yeah. exactly <laughs> all right so let's talk about the next topic uh just move it along uh, what do you guys, what are your thoughts on four grips? Ooh, four mm -hmm. grips. <coughs> I think on all of our primaries right now, we, we all, all have, have hand stops. Yeah, we all yep. have something. Yeah. yeah. So, so for me, I used to run a four grip traditionally holding it. Mm. But now oh, yeah. since I, you know, learned a little bit more about, um, uh, gun manipulation studied the way shooting the technique yeah, shooting technique yeah. um i do more of a modified c clamp so if i have the hand stop it allows me to do a like a more traditional c clamp but if i have a vertical grip i kind of just tuck my hands into this weird like l shape uh, where yeah it just yeah. Like this <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> so i'm still able to wrap my thumb over but still be able to pull the gun in to make it more secure right i will say in my experience i actually started out uh my first foregrip that i got was the magpul afg that was your uh, first yeah, yeah that was the first one bougie bro well, AFG, well I'm, i mean i mean i had a broom handle that like i got on my like super old like uk arms like mm. I, I don't count that 
But like, okay. I'm, saying, I'm saying for like my common machine, which was like my first real airsoft gun, like serious airsoft gun. You know, I I got Macaulay FG. I, I bought it for like 20 bucks. Nice. Off of yeah, like like a buddy that that uh, I used to play with, and he was getting rid of his. And so that was the first one that I used. And then, you know, I watched a ton of Chris Costa videos back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, dude, that's so cool. I want to be like him. It's so cool. And then, <laughs> so cool, dude. The Magpul Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then eventually I moved on to the RVG, the Magpul RVG. Okay. Yeah, their version of the Vrogo, the shorty Vrogo foregrip. And yep. then I, yeah, so basically I, I ran that for a while. And then um, I, I don't know what it was, but like, I think it's also because my gun was very front heavy at the time. And also, like, we were playing out, like, in very long distances and stuff. So I had to hold my gun up for a long time. I ended up getting fatigued a lot. Mm. So I, okay. I changed over to a vertical foregrip. And then I stayed on, like, stubby foregrips for years. Yep. And then uh, now I'm, I'm going back to, like, the more, like, angled and hands up. Actually, to, to this day, this BCM... I don't even know what to call it, like hand stop angle grip. I think they call it the, the kinetic. Kinetic angled grip. Yeah. The CAG, yeah. CAG. Uh, yeah. Such a gross, <laughs> gross way to name but, it. But it is by far for me, my opinion, it's my favorite, the best mm. angle grip right there on the market. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, when I started out, I actually started with the, um, the Strike Industries angled for another grip. bougie yeah yeah that, that one was really nice I, again as the link the one that had the, the it, link it was yo, it was a very the, aggressive the, the, the barricade yeah, stop yeah, and then yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know. the corner yeah that could stab yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i love the look of it um but actually in practicality it wasn't comfortable for me and i found over time that angle foregrips were starting to be less and less comfortable for me because actually when i when i play i tend to like my wrist when straight it's on the rail, I like to have it a little bit more straight up yep. instead of like pushed forward. Yeah. Especially if I'm like holding a corner for a long time. Like I, I find that turning my wrist like this for yeah. an angled foregrip is a little less comfortable. Yep. So when I uh, went over and purchased an aim sports grip, ah. thank you for mm. that recommendation, Cisco. Hey. <laughs> he recommended that to me and it, it it's honestly one of my favorite foregrips. Really? Because um, it's not perfectly vertical yeah it's a, it little has angled. That, a little bit of an angle but it's like just it's like the perfect blend between an angled foregrip and a vertical foregrip yes like i it, agree it's great and um i did chop it just to be you know a little bit shorter so that it's, clean it's just it where i need it to be yeah clean it up a little bit um but i find that with that little bit of an angle is the perfect angle for me and it's the most comfortable again because I'm seat clamping. Yes. So it's just fits very well in my hands. That's funny that that you said that about um, the striking industry's grip because I love that thing too. Oh, it, yeah. looks it looks just so aggressive. It's clean. But I had it on my relay arm and a couple of air sockets and I realized I didn't like my wrist position either. Mm -hmm. And in a like a dynamic scenario where I would need to Draw or place the gun really quick, I'd find myself overextending a little bit and mm -hmm. then the barricade stop would just end up in between my fingers Ooh. somewhere. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, they, oh, whatever. You know, just yeah, yeah. get it to fire. But um, how do you, okay, so in continuation of vertical grip hand stops, how do you like it placed? Do you like your arm all the way out or do you like to bend your elbow a little bit? I prefer a small bend. So actually, if you look at my MWS right now, it, the CAG is actually placed a little bit farther back. back. Yep. Because I like having, I, I don't like having it completely stiff because it'll just make my arm really numb after a while. Um, but one thing I will add, by the way, to previous comments is one thing I noticed in my personal experience is shorter guns, I like having more vertical grips. So when I'm when yeah. I'm rocking like PDWs or anything like super small, it's because your your yeah, elbows more compacted. Yeah. Oh. So you need a more vertical platform because if you do this, this is very uncomfortable. Hmm. And Especially because yeah, and then for mid length to longer guns, I actually like having a more like angled foregrip or whatever, because doing this also is very fatiguing. So like for this, it's, it, it actually creates a slight bend in your elbow, yeah. which is. Yeah, so to answer your question, yeah, like I, I don't like it having straight out or whatever. It just makes it very stiff and like it, it's just hard to maneuver around. And like what you said, right, like quote unquote, it's not so cringe, dynamic situation. Yes. Like, especially if I'm on like a, like a Milsim game or whatever. Like um, last time I played, I played as a civilian faction. So there were a lot of like surprise attacks, surprise ambushes, yep. right? Like dead, just caught off guard. Yeah, caught off guard or whatever. And I had to bring that gun up. Um, for, I apologize. For me... 
I I found it that like um, when I had like a like a hand stop or whatnot or like a vertical foregrip, so something a bit bigger than just a minimal hand stop, it allowed me to actually get my hand in place way faster. Like compared to something like this, this I might need more practice using this because it's yeah. new to me, but. Yeah, like like getting it up exactly where you need it to be, your mm -hmm. hand need to be. Like that's the whole purpose of the hand stop, right? Where the angle yep. it needs to be exactly right there mm -hmm. uh, in the moment. And I think just having a bigger foregrip, honestly, it just helps you out in, in the short term, just because there's more room for error. More yep. Error. Yeah. I agree to that. Okay. Next accessory, <clears throat> stocks. Let's just all agree, adjustable. Yes. Yes. All adjustable? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next yeah, topic. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of stocks do you guys like? We all agree on adjustable stocks, but yeah. the profile of it. Ooh. I, okay. Well, being the indoor player, I, of course, love low profile stocks. So the uh, Magpul, I think it's the uh, EPS. Is that it? Magpul? Or EPSC or not not Mac PTS. PTS. Yes. PTS PTS EPSC EPS yes yeah. uh, the that one stuff. I use actually on my outdoor gun which is contrary to what I just said yeah <laughs> uh, but I do like a slimmer profile stock the only uh, downside is that if you're using it on an AG you have little battery space yeah which is the only thing that sucks mm -hmm. um, so if I were to get a fatter stock for more battery space uh, what is the other um, PTS stock. It's just EPS. It's just EPS. Enhanced polymer stock. Oh, okay. Yeah. That one has hella batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That so one's same stock. with the classic army BAS. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, the tons BAS. Of if you didn't know, BAS stands for big ass stock. Hey. <laughs> like, not even kidding. It's yeah, exactly that's literally what it stands for. <laughs> Boys, what about you? Uh, so, I agree with Kevin. I, I almost universally, I like slimmer stocks. I, I just... Uh, I, I never found like the big crane stocks to be comfortable. I know a lot of people love it for the cheek weld. And so like for me, like it just never felt comfortable. Uh, at the end of the day for me, stocks is just, it's purely cosmetic. There's no real like function behind it. I think I'll use a preference like for this. This is the Magpul SLK stock. Uh, yeah, honestly, I wish there were more of them out there. They're out of stock everywhere. <laughs> Magpul, come on. But <laughs> Yeah, I, I personally just like this stock a lot because um, I've, I've noticed that like uh, sometimes stocks with more overhang, like it, it, it tends to it tends to jam up in my gear or like especially if I'm, you're wearing a plate. Yeah, yeah. Too. I'm, I'm actually slower on the gun actually. Yeah. So so the SLK they reduce the overhang, right? So it's more it's more almost kind of like a PDW stock, and I yeah I love PDW stocks actually. I love them because mm. that they're just they they might not be the most comfortable, but man, it gets you on the gun super fast because yeah. it's not it's it's really like out of the way. There's no overhang. Yep. Yeah, and like especially if you're running a sling or whatever. Like I know some people like to use the the Mission First Tactical Minimalist stock. Yep. Ah, uh, that was yeah. my first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just a hook, and like one thing I noticed, especially since I run two point slings, it just gets caught everywhere. Like, yeah. In the gear, like I I do not like that at all. So, I I, I like the. I think my favorite stocks right now, to date, are the Magpul SL line, the either the full size SL. I like the SLK better now because it's a smaller, stubbier stock, and I love the BCM stock. Mm, I, just, I love BCM. it so much. I love it so much. The Gunfighter stock. Yeah, yeah. I get it. That's funny because I noticed a trend with your stocks, Kevin. They get smaller. Yeah, because <laughs> you had. I had oh. the MFT stock yep. on my on my yellow gun. And then I shifted over to the Strike Industries, the Strike Industries Viper stock, Viper stock. and I, I still love that stock. It's the perfect blend between aesthetic and being minimal, mm -hmm. and just yep. like you know the overhang that Boaz was talking about. Yep, um, I love that one. Okay, for sure. For me, I mean, honestly, it it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, as long I as find it's adjustable. That, yeah, I find that if you. You, you tend to like adjustable, battery space, comfortable, easy yeah. to use. Like, there's yeah. lots of crane stock. Yeah. Lots, like, of, yeah. Crane, lots so, of lots of PTS, EPS yeah. stock. Yeah. No, yeah. I had, okay, so don't get me wrong. I do have like seven of them. Like seven. Damn. <laughs> Bias. Stocks. But the reason for, for that was battery space. Um, and I had that on a lot of G&G &G guns where the battery space is probably like two thirds of the buffer tube. Nowadays, I swap out most of my uh, buffer tubes or try to get guns that have a full 
buffer tube so I can throw a stick battery in there and not worry about it. But um, if something uh, a little bit more uh, unique like my Tokimurui NGRS, uh, I have no buffer tube space. Because so you have the, to have it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I have to have uh, a stock. I think right now I have my Classic Army BS mm-hmm. stock on there. But before that, I think I had my PTS stock on there. Mm-hmm. And for me, like majority of airsoft guns that are rewired come with crane stocks. I don't have any um, problem with it. I used to actually prefer that, but that, but that was back in like 2010, 2000, whatever, um, where um, all these airsoft uh, specific stocks that cater to batteries didn't exist. But um, so now, now let's just put the scenario where battery space doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about a battery. What stock would you pick? I'm going. Uh, I'm definitely going minimalist for sure. Minimalist. Yeah, Cause just for storage, um, for carrying. I think the minimalist. I am in the same boat as you guys, where um, it just makes the overall gun faster to manipulate. Um, my favorite stock is the MFT stock, the yes. MFT Knew minimalist it. stock. Yes. Knew it. But love that song. It's such a classic look. But what you just said, Boaz, I don't like how long it is. Mm. And I stop it. I thought about it, but I don't think I don't think it'll look that clean. No, no, it won't. Yeah. It won't. So I mean I do have the Viper stock as well. I've used that. I love that. I have used the PTS Slim stock. I've used uh I have probably two or three Magpul MOE stocks. Um, Gotta try the SLK. It will change your life. I have been looking at it. I mean, they just haven't been available. It'll change your life. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, I I won't deny that it doesn't look good. It's fantastic. Yeah, it looks but good. Now, the, my one gripe about it is that adjustability is like you have to hit the lever up here versus it just being on the bottom. Yeah. Which I mean, there are pros and cons to that. I'm I'm, de- I'm all for the set it and forget it. Yeah. So I mean, for me, um. I actually adjust my stock depending on what I'm doing. Like if I am outdoors, if I'm outside of buildings, I'll have it maybe to like the third or second position so I can get more of a comfortable uh, length of pull. But if I'm going indoors, I want I want it as close to my body as possible. So I'm shorting it all the way. I'm tucking it in. I'm, yeah, I used, to, I used to actually just run it all the way in all the time, but it just really tired out my wrists. Yeah, because so now so now that. I'm more. Yeah, so I just found a position that's comfortable f- for me in all situations. So it's usually like I think it's somewhere between three to four clicks. Yeah, is the most same. comfortable for me. Um, yeah, but but I think overall my opinion on stocks in general is I kind of view it as like shoes on an outfit. Like I, I tend to view it as it's more of a fashion, especially in airsoft. It's a fashion. It is statement. definitely even in, a even in real life. Statement. Most of the time, like unless you're actually doing like duty work, mm. you know, and you need to have a stock that's super functional for most like recreation shooters, it's it's you know it's a fashion statement. I just think if you're gonna have like a nice sleek gun, you need a sleek stock to match. I agree. Yeah, it's like you know if you have like a big old stock and a, like a very like slim handguard and everything everything is sleek it, it, it reminds you of classic a... speed soft their slim handguard stubby stock yeah yeah yeah. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah every time i think of that it reminds you of like someone wearing like like a skinny shirt skinny jeans and balenciaga <laughs> wait, shoes you know wait a bricks minute. timberlands oh and speaking of speed soft though kevin not only in addition to the minimalist stocks runs drop stocks ah uh, yes yes drop now stock. circling back to what i said earlier why do you think that the drop stock is more advantageous than having just an optic riser? Well, because with an optic riser, yes, it raises the optic up to where you need it to be. But I actually found that after using the drop stock, my hand position feels better too. Oh, really? Like, well, it's also like, comfort for the cheek weld, right? Because you have, because your your face is fatter because of your mask, right? Yes. So just having a, a riser up, you're still having to smush your face against a the the stock whereas if you drop the stock you don't the stock is out of oh, the way oh it clears it yeah. oh, okay that makes yeah. sense yeah yeah oh interesting so okay. that's fine i didn't think about that too yeah. interesting but anyways what do you guys think about uh flashlight accessories any any flashlight oh, accessories I have, that I've, I've learned some hard lessons that you like or don't like or need or don't need hard lessons personally <laughs> for me i have always been in the tlr boat 
I have used my TLR for years on pistols. Not an understatement. On pistols, exactly. on rifles, and I know a lot of people, they don't like the, the look. Same it's on the same one TLR. It's the same one TLR. Yeah, same one. I just, just I don't over. even buy another light. I just swap the TLR around. Yep. Um, but I know a lot of people, they don't like the look of the TLR top mounted on the, yeah. the rail. And it's a, I, I agree, it's a very ugly look. But functional wise, it makes sense. It makes sense, especially in my type of play um, where we play competitively and I need to keep a low profile. If I have a side mounted light like this one and I try to peek a corner uh, and peek my barrel out, the first thing that the enemy will see is my light and then my barrel. So that little split exposure before I can get my shot off is life or death for me. Yep. So having it top mounted, Right when my barrel comes out is same when time. my light comes out. Yep, right at the same time, and I can flash it real quick, and that's when I can shoot. And it makes sense functionally, visually. I hate the look of it. <laughs> I don't think it looks bad, honestly. I, I don't know. I agree to disagree. I don't like the look. Of Have it. you seen the like the inline, like the the thorn the, nail, the light? enforce? Yeah. Oh yeah, enforce. Sorry. The, with the angled button. Yeah. I I've seen that, and I also don't like it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And. I don't know. It, it might just be biased because I've used the TLR for so long that I'm so comfortable with how mm. how to use it and how it works and everything. But I don't know. I just never found a need to switch it out. I although mean, although I do find that when I'm switching hands and using the TLR, since the lever is like one, it'll lock. It'll yeah. One was, yeah. one side will lock and one side was just like has the a toggle. spring to, yeah. Yeah, to toggle. That is a little annoying. So I would see why the Enforce is better in that way. Yep. But I'm not sure the Enforce is brighter than the TLR. I think they're newer aluminum ones. They, I think they, I yeah, think, I, I think, I think there's, there's a, a, yeah, there was a sad story. Yeah, where I, I remember for a time, I think 2014, 2015, yeah, the WML was very trendy. Yeah, you but saw it was it on so all guns. Yeah, it wasn't that bright. Yeah, it wasn't no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then they everyone realized, oh, like actually, surefires are way brighter and way better. Like it looks kind of cool, but everyone kind of threw theirs away or stopped using theirs. And then, and then, Enforce was like, oh wait, no, 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 we have a brighter one. We have, but it was too late. Yeah, yeah, too late. Well, not only that, but with the with the Enforce you're limited on where you can place yeah the flashlight true but i think their philosophy was very much what kevin was saying like you top mount it yeah that way you know when you're peeking corners and what it, yeah it, it's, it's aligned with and they also designed it right right when key mod and m lock was a thing they mm -hmm. wanted to make it more in line at a 45 degree offset yeah so mm -hmm. it's such a natural button push for you yeah right. now i have some hard lessons that i learned actually very recently about flashlights <laughs> let me tell you so it's gonna hurt to say this, but, <laughs> but um, primarily I usually use flashlights, honestly, just because it looks cool. Like that, that, that's a primary reason, right? Like I just think it looks cool. If completes uh, function, the, the yeah, book. yeah. Functionally wise, I've always actually said I was not a proponent of bright flashlights. And the reason why I said that was because I wanted to keep my signature low. So even when I was in CQB, you know, if I shine my flashlight, I don't want half the field to know where I am when I do it because I'm dealing with multiple targets. I'm not just dealing with one guy I'm shooting at, right? There's like 10 other guys wanting to shoot me. And so I just wanted to keep it kind of sort of dim and then just bright enough to where I could sort of see where my BBs are going and that was it. And I, I think I think for the most time, like playing in public games, it kind of worked out for me actually, just because, you know, not, not many people would see my light because it was not very bright. So I can get away with very low cost replica flashlights. Yep. Uh, that all changed for me this past Saturday so, <laughs> as of recording of this video. Uh, I was at a Lion Claws event with airplanes and it, it, it got, it gets very dark. Like, uh, some, very. some places I've been, the airplanes I've been into, like they would straight up, like black out some of the windows to intentionally make it dark. Mm -hmm. I was running my KW ERG. Uh, I really wanted to run this guy, but it didn't pass chrono, unfortunately. Oh, really? You know, oh, it, I, I, it, it didn't. Yeah, ran. but but my too hot. Yeah, but my ERG it, it passed chrono, and that one also has a very like small, stubby, weak scout light. Yeah. And like I said for a while, you know, I only use it to really just light up my BBs and sort of kind of see. But the problem was in this scenario, uh, the like there was a lot less. It was a very linear field. Yep. Right. You're shoot, so you're only just gonna really yeah you're only gonna shoot one guy at a time really. And the light was dim to the point where it didn't really make a difference if I used it or not. And on top of that, 
like uh, it made sense to blind these guys so I, I so I had a teammate who had a surefire light super bright flashlight mm -hmm. and another buddy who had a TLR and they were able to light up and like see clearly right like who was hiding behind these airplane seats while I couldn't yep you know and then they're also additionally able to blind these, these guys for a little bit kind of disorient them yep and that's sort of where I learned like oh shoot like I need this like even on my sidearm right I was using a Elite Force Glock 17 and I had a TLR on that one and there was a situation where I did have to pull it on and use it on somebody and I did use that TLR and it it blinded him right so he gave them the shot yeah so he he froze he froze for a second and that was all I needed right so then I just pulled the trigger on him and I, I killed him you know so I noticed the difference killed him in airsoft Yes, yes, in airsoft. <laughs> airsoft, right? Yeah, we have Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So now I think I'm taking a serious look now at all my rifles that I have flashlights on, and I honestly think maybe it's time to drop yeah. some money on a good Ooh. flashlight. Upgrade. Uh, mm -hmm. Upgrade. Yeah, I, I hate, it. To get I the hate real it so ones. much. I hate it so much. <laughs> so for me, I have a philosophy of of how I build my rifles. Um, they, for me, it's every gun... Every rifle needs a red dot, backup sights, some type of vertical grip, and some type of lighting system. Mm -hmm. um, I Even if you don't need it, it, again, it's better to have it and not need it than to need and not have it. And the amount of times where I've had the flashlight on my gun and it came in handy is dramatically more than the times that I didn't need it. And um, like, I mean, I'm on a budget. We're all on a budget. And I typically will get cheaper low lumen flashlights because they look like it's the look, it's the look, but depending on how you use it, because in like, have you guys ever played like blackout games in uh, uh, yes. Tag City? Yes. Uh, so, they... Oh, you mean battle labs, but all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So whenever they did that, when I was using my TLR, uh, the thousand lumens, it it made me disoriented when I turn it off because I'm just like, oh crap! It's so bright. It's so bright. <laughs> so running a like a two to three hundred lumen light, mm -hmm. I'm able to not get you know more. What's the correct term for like, flashback? Like, like re readjusting your your low light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was able to um, perform a little bit better, but I do know for sure that that having the high lumens to disorient the enemy player oh, is yeah. super advantageous. Oh, yeah. It's come to a point where I have like PTSD whenever I see a bright flash, I like flinch. Yeah, you're, oh, it's, you know, it's a, a natural instinct now because of all the TLRs that, that's so that funny. roam rampant in, mm. in That is so areas. funny. Oh, For oh. me, I had that reflex when I used to play uh, Tax City like every Wednesday uh, yeah. uh, when it was full force night. Every time I'd see a light, I would just go to a squat. Yeah, I'd flinch. Just, oh. <laughs> Real quick, yeah, 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 for sure. That's so yeah. funny. I yeah, I mean, position of the flashlight. Um, typically, I'll do what Boaz does and have it offset. But I do have a few rifles where I have the rail space, so I can put it either at the top or the bottom, uh, above the barrel, which is the most advantageous because you want to expose it at the same time. But I mean, it all depends because you can put your flashlight out, and like if you're pieing that corner. You can blind them first and then shoot, but mm -hmm. ideally you'd want to shoot the same time that they're blind. So. You know what I don't see a lot? And I'm sure it's for good reason, but I don't see a lot of um, flashes mount on the bottom and a pressure switch on top. I think it's just yeah. because of rail space, probably just real estate. Yep. But it's, it's like those rare. old MP5s. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually really like that look of a flashlight mounted underneath. underneath. Yeah, but with modern flashlights like the like a streamlight style or not streamlight like uh, the scout style um because the pressure switch the wires well, the wire comes uh, out yeah, right, right, that right. typically will interfere with where yeah. i want to put my hand yeah, on the rail so and then w one thing i would like to also ask you guys about um that i think often gets overlooked by most air softers but to me it matters a lot pistol grips mm -hmm. grips pistol grips yeah for me i hate I hate the standard M4 pistol grip. <laughs> the A2, yeah, A1. I do not like, yeah, like that finger shelf that comes off. Like I, I'm, whenever I grab my gun, it's always in the wrong position. It always rubs me the wrong way. 
like I have to get rid of it. So for me, growing up, my favorite was the uh, back in the day when MacBook was MacBook PTS mm -hmm. was their PTS MOE grip. That was by far my favorite because it was literally just the A2 in, 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 like in a similar fashion, but just yep. without the finger shell. It was a little bulkier. Yeah, it was a little bulkier, yeah, but it looked cooler. And, um, and now I think there's so many options out there. I think uh, like one one pistol grip I ran for years was the Aries Amoeba pistol grip because oh yeah yeah because it was yeah no exactly that one yeah hey, look at yeah that. it didn't have the beaver tail so I I had like a very aggressive grip Wait, the texturing off. is just it's, nice and warm. it's fantastic yeah, that's good it's very aggressive texturing yeah I like it yeah yeah and then I've been able to hold on <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then um, the um, the K2 grip came up from Magpul, and I started running these on my gas build back rack bulls. Uh, I just love the way it kind of like divots here to yep. make a pocket for your, your your web of your thumb and your finger. Uh, I've used it on all my gas build back rack bulls, and I think Lancer Tactical Gen 3 now has yep. uh, a pistol grip very similar in that fashion where it has that little cutout yep. for your, your, your web mm. of your hand. And I, I believe also it was Sentinel Gears, they've been making a similar hand mm. pistol grip like that. I think while. Sentinel yeah, Gears yeah. has it. Yeah, I, I, I've been putting that on my AGs and also the the PTS EPG C, C. the yes. one without the beaver tail. Yeah, that yep. one's also really nice. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite for sure is a pistol grip of this style where it has that nice little divot. Yeah. Kevin. Um, I, for the longest time, didn't really notice a change in pistol grips. I was just kind of like, you know, whatever about it. Yeah. Um, but I did find that um, when I used like a standard angle pistol grip, um, I would shoot a lot with my middle finger mm. because um, the angle of my wrist, I like it to be, again, more vertical. So it's, yeah. it's less strain on my wrist. So when I go um, more vertical, more relaxed of a wrist position, my middle finger is where the trigger is. And so I'd be able to shoot really fast with my middle finger. Um, and then I think it was, it was either you or Boaz that introduced me to the EPGC. It was Boaz. Um, and he showed me it on one of his bills. And I was like, oh my God, this feels amazing. Like it's, it's less harsh of an angle, uh, more vertical, which fits what I want. And it's nice and slim, it's clean, it looks great. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put this on every one of my guns <laughs> and I haven't looked back. So in terms of pistol grips that I really like and recommend, PTS EPGC. That's hear it. So for me, I before I was in the same boat with you, Boaz, I didn't like the finger shelf on the A2 grip. The angle, I didn't mind so much because of how I would run the stock. But um, I do agree that having a a straighter vertical grip does make it more comfortable especially over a long period of time of using the gun you're not running into that fatigue that you normally would um as you know a builder uh i find that it's somewhat difficult to get the correct motor angle yes you, you'll and get I did, uh, I did find that um when taylor was building my gun he was running into some issues yeah with the, the motor angle, angle of the motor yeah because because it'll just like the old uh, magpul grip uh through pts like er, any gun that that had that on there it would just be the screechiest grindiest you know just teeth shattering <laughs> like it was just so it was so irritating because i like that style but nowadays um you know what you said lancer tactical com coming out with a, a grip very similar to the magpul grip um and it still keeps the motor uh in a pretty good angle and um for me i typically run like the vfc a2 grip because i know that that angle is perfect no matter what version 2 like gearbox gun that i put it on it's gonna freaking per be perfect no matter what but um I still hate it. Yeah, I know. No, me too. There was a point in time where, uh, like, I would shave the that nub off with like a Dremel, just so I could still have like my motor angle, but like not deal with that. But I don't know. I've just grown used to it. And then I wear gloves too, which I think was, um, I don't think it was helpful, but it helped distract me from that from that notch. Mm -hmm. But it's funny how like 
as we're talking about all these things, we do have a lot of very similar philosophies and mm-hmm. how we like our guns to be. Built. I think this also lends to like you know we follow a lot of the same advice from the same people. Oh, like, true. Like when we when we talk about like real shooting or whatever, like we're still very much influenced by the the gun influencers of our time. Mm-hmm. So I think that helps, and also I think it's just shared experiences. I think for a lot of us, we we kind of play in the same areas. You know, we yes. have the same similar experiences just as players you know in a local area i think the only real thing that i would differ from both of you guys is running like a laser unit on top mm. Ooh, and so laser yeah. yeah yeah so for me i don't use visible lasers but uh i would i tend to gravitate more towards using them on guns that i'll take them out to like milsim events mm-hmm. just because you know the possibility of using night vision and you know most of the time you can't use your optics when you're wearing night vision just yeah. the goggles are just too far up uh, so, you know, aiming passive, is it passive? No, it's not passive aiming, but just aiming with the laser, uh, it does help. I don't know the term, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Passive aiming is actually what you do with the Unity Riser. Like, they, they specifically made these so that you could use your night vision goggles with your optic. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny, because, I mean, for me, uh, like, I have a lot of peg boxes, D-balls on to you know many different guns i mean it looks sick it looks, it like looks look. good it is definitely look. for the look for me though if i don't have a flashlight um on a gun i'll have the peck box and have the floodlight at least open so i can use that even though it's not projecting far it's still bright enough for anyone that's looking at it just to be like oh crap like kind of have to squint a little bit try to find the target a little bit more yeah so i think that's the only time that we actually differ on on opinion but that's just because you know like you, you don't really go out to Milsom games. And yeah. You haven't yet. Yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that's the only thing. We'll both go really, one day. Yeah, differ from, I think, but I, I like you said, I think it's kind of surprising that we all more or less kind of have the same philosophy. And, and I, actually, I'm curious for you guys, actually, uh, that are listening, uh, what uh, you guys think about our opinions. Like, do you, do, does our opinions line up with yours? You know, do you got different anyway? And I, for me, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, most seasoned airsofters I've been playing for a while, they might agree with us for the most part, just because we all have very similar yes playing out on fields. Yeah, but I mean, every person's gonna be different. Like, we take all three of our guns and display them. They're not gonna be like, even though we have the similar taste, they're not gonna be configured or accessorized the same exact way. So. It all depends. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Maybe we'll do a part two for all the other accessories. Mm-hmm. Think. There's so many accessories I know. that you yeah, talk yeah. about, but I, th- I think we've been yeah. going on for a little too long now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but, but you bet when I'm playing Call of Duty, whenever I play Call of Duty, I maximize all the accessories. <laughs> all the attack. Dude, when Modern Warfare 2019 came out and they're like, you could have as many accessories as you want, up to five. I was jumping up and down for joy see a game that you need to play then is uh, uh, Tarkov oh yeah Escape from Tarkov my, my computer you can, cannot handle you can <laughs> kit out your gun to the max to the max yeah I know oh, yeah, you, you I saw you go even to like like buffer springs buffer tubes yeah 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 oh my it's, it's dope it's, like, it's dope. crazy yeah. like the bolt carry it's super cool yeah 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 but growing up playing Call of Duty right Modern Warfare 2 Way back in the day, you were limited you, to two attachments. No, yeah, yeah. That's if you're running the bling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you bet, you bet. I ran that bling, bro. I was like, dude, I need that suppressor and the new tube. Or like, oh, I need the red dot and red the dot suppressor. And suppressor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you bet. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for tuning into the Dead Box Podcast. Um, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments below. Like Boa said, do any of our philosophies align with yours or do they differ? Uh, tell us what you prefer in the comments below. Um, let us know what our next topic should be as well. If you want us to continue this topic and go into other accessories, we will. Uh, other than that, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, support ourselfgi.com to support the channel. So that way we can still make these podcasts. and other Yeah, videos. that. Because we need... I'm still eating his meal, so it's all good. Damn you. (laughs) All right, later.